a histogram of a chest, okay, where it's black in both long fields, okay, it's white here in the middle, and what's that? The mediastinum, okay, it's, uh, and then over here, it's actually white on either side, or it might have a little spike up on either side for the black air <coughs> of it. And then it comes down for the soft tissues at either side of your chest. So it does a histogram of the optical density as it reads it across the center of the radiograph. So you still do not get away from this, okay? So you need to know how, what that, those numbers mean and how much of the light it's transmitting. Now, it does make sense because where you have that chart, okay, if you look to the, to the left, okay, where you see opacity, if something has an opacity of one, it doesn't, it means that it's not gonna absorb a whole bunch of radiation, right? Okay, so, um, it's going to have 100% of the light that goes through. Or maybe should I say, if it has an opacity of 1, it's, it's more dense. Because, like, let's look at where bone would be for the optical density of 1. It has an opacity of 10, okay? Uh, whereas something that has a 4 that shows up really black, okay, it has an opacity of 10,000, okay, which is weird because you would think of something that is 10,000 having a lot of dense opacity to it, but it really doesn't because that's something that's air, okay. Use, instead of a grid, we can use air gap instead of a grid if we don't want to do the technique, and causes magnification and loss of recorded detail. Yes, it does. Okay, so what, because we have this much OID for the lateral sternum or the lateral C-spine, what do we do? Increase the SID. Yeah. Okay, good, awesome, all right. So uh, that helps that issue of the magnification and it also helps the recorded detail because of it. Okay, self-filtration, so here's our area of disarray, you know, where everybody can't get on the same page of it. We know that it's, we increase filtration, it's gonna do what? Or if we use filtration, it's gonna do what? It's gonna yeah, take yeah, out the all the soft rates. rates. Basically what the definition says that it increases what? The, beam. Average, energy. the average energy of the beam. I don't disagree with that. It's, doing 10 quizzes and throwing the lowest one out and it raises your average. It increases the average and I agree with that, okay? But, okay, everybody disagrees at this because did those soft rays add to the density on the radiograph at all? Did they contribute anything? No, they just added to patient dose. So some people will say have photons that cause a scatter versus getting absorbed by the skin. People will say that it decreases contrast, but the change is negligible. So, mm. friction. Okay, so again, as we increase collimation, which means we're going which way with our collimators? Making it smaller or making it bigger? Smaller. Making it smaller. As we increase collimation, um, there, there's going to be less photons coming down. What's actually refining the beam? Shutters. In the, yeah, what? What are those shutters made up of? Lead. lead. Okay, so lead shutters that are just cutting that beam off, okay? And it's those photons that are hitting are just getting absorbed, okay? They're not going anywhere, okay? Uh, less photons create less scatter, okay? So what happens is it's not getting the scatter there, so it's not adding to density as we said, okay, and because it does, we don't have that fog hitting the film, it increases the contrast. So we're going to get things that are shorter scale. I can't remember that we evaluated, did you guys do that? Shannon, that experiment where we did a pelvis and then we collimated down to an 8 by 10? Yes. Yes, okay. 
I didn't really, we didn't really look at contrast, but um, I don't know what it, what it would have showed us. But um, they were very similar, so I don't know if you really see a big. Yeah, I don't remember difference. seeing that much of a of a difference between them. Okay, right, so increased contrast. The patient, we've already talked about the patient as far as the subject contrast. It all depends what kind of body part. Now, when if you have a a, a part like your hand, okay, how many shades, how many densities does it have in there? Two, three. Three, three. yeah. We can say muscle, some bone, and the skin, soft tissues. So if you have a fat hand, you could have fat. Do we really want to see short scale of contrast things? We sort of want to lengthen it a little bit more, right? Because you want to see the, you want to be able to see the soft tissue, right? Yeah. So what we do is, when we were using film, what we would try to do is match it with a a film that lengthened the scale of contrast. Now we had the ability to do that with film. Okay. We don't have the ability to do that with CR and DR. So what we would try to do was mix match them. So if we had a body part that had a short scale of contrast, we would try to use a film that gave it, because we said regular radiographic contrast is a combination of subject contrast and film contrast, right? Okay. So we would try to mix match them so that we would get a kind of normal scale of contrast. Okay. Somewhere in the middle. All right. So with the hand, we would try to lengthen it. With something like an abdomen, we would try to shorten that scale of contrast. Okay, so that we could see the kidneys from the liver, from the psoas muscles. Okay, because they all have different absorptions, and if we could just shorten that scale a little bit, we could better define those structures. Okay, so, but we don't have the ability to do that now with the RCR. Okay. Um, subject contrast, film contrast, yeah. but what kind of sets the stage for both of those to, in determining the overall contrast? The KVP. Okay, so how we hit that body part and that film with the photons, the energy of the photons, can also set up the scale of contrast, right? Like chest versus ribs. Chest we use a really high KVP for, okay, so that it gives us a what? Longer scale contrast, because what kind, of, how many densities do we have inside the chest? Uh, what do you think? We have air. Oh, we have air. Bone. Bone is Muscle. over top of the what? Steinum. So we basically have the mediastinum. We have bone as far as the ribs go, but do we want to see those ribs? No. Okay. So we kind of lengthen, we hit it with a really high beam, high energy beam, so it kind of goes through ribs. There's the muscle, which has the diaphragm. Yeah, but that's not over the chest. Yeah, but I mean, like you have the, I know they're small, but you have the intercostal muscles. They're small. Yeah. They're not real bulky. You eat ribs all the time, right? Yeah. You eat ribs. You don't get too much meat on them, do you? And on DR and CR all the time. I haven't even thought about that. Okay, you haven't thought about that. But when you I was would. studying, I would have thought about that. Okay. All right. Well, that's not true. Okay. Because when you create the image and it starts to process, you know that as it's processing, it looks really crap, right? And you think, oh my God, is this going to be good or is it not going to be good? It's kind of like when we had the processor and it took 90 minutes for it to process. And we'd say, oh my God, and say, pray to the gods that your image was okay. You know, that you didn't have to repeat it or it didn't. I ran a film in there yesterday. I thought for sure it was going to get chewed up. It was crinkling and crunching all the way through and I'm there. Please make this be 
good because I had shut the whole machine down. <laughs> I think I made my exposure. That's all I have to do, you know. And then it's cranking and crunching. I don't know why. It's fine, but so anyway, <clears throat> when you when you're waiting and it's doing that crunch, 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 but that it's doing that ugly thing coming up image, and then it looks really pretty. That's when it goes to that lookup table. And it's applying whatever you told them that image was going to be. So if you told them it was a hand, it's going to the hand, and it's applying an algorithm to the whole image. Okay? That's really what's happening. But as you do it, it's creating a histogram. Have you ever looked at the histogram for your images? Okay, you can. Any image that you want to, it's one of the boxes that you just click on and it'll give you a histogram on it. And for a chest, the histogram may look like this and then like this, okay? And basically, four, three, two, one, zero. It has one. optical yeah. density. Read in the middle column. Yeah, yeah, and then the next number. Oh. No, no, no. Don't read that first column at all. Uh, read the middle column. Yeah. Go to one. Yeah. And go to the your right. It uh, says ten percent. Okay. Uh, up at the top, it says ten percent yeah. of light transmitted through the film. Okay. 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 Now, if it's a zero, it's letting a hundred percent of the light go through. So you need to know. You need to for your registry. You will need to know those four numbers. Okay. And how much light it transmits through. So, if we have zero, it's letting through 100% of the light. If we have a one, it's letting through 10% of the light. A two will be 1% of the light. A three will be 0.01% of the light. And a four will be 0.001%. So very little light gets through where it's reading out of four. Okay? Got to know those. Now, okay. is that the reading with the densitometer? Yeah, that's. Okay. So this is the optical density. Okay? And this is the percentage of light through Long scale? Or it's a Short. low contrast. Okay? And it's a long scale because there's many shades of gray. Okay? Got it? Okay. So we use those two words, okay? to mean to have a difference between them, okay? Um, but we group them. 